Hello and welcome back. I've got a mailbag for you today. So it's going to be quite a random bunch of stuff in here. It's, um, a few of these packages have actually been around for months, but uh, there's some stuff I do want to open, so uh, let's get down to it. And some of these parcels, I haven't got a clue what's in them. I'm pretty sure that's going to be some 555 chips. Yep. When I was building this circuit for the UART testing, I've been meaning to build a circuit like this. This is basically some debounce switches and a stand in for a bus display and a sort of dip switches that can assert a value onto a bus. So, this is for testing CPU type functionality without needing all of my CPU. I needed three 555 timers for this. So I ended up having to pull one of those out of a pre-existing circuit. So this will let me restock all of those and uh, have a, a bunch spare for later. Okay, so here we are. It's £2.90 from Amazon for 10 of them. That's really quite cheap. And I think it was well worth getting myself a bunch of these extra. I had to borrow two of these from the dice kit I built a while ago to build that breadboard. So I've now replaced those with uh, with these so I can confirm that at least two of them worked fine. You can never have too many 555s. This is an Arduino. So this is a Mega. I got this one because it's got lots of I.O. pins. I'll tell you a secret. I own three different Arduinos now and I've never fired any of them up. I really should get around that to that at some point. They're quite an interesting concept. Bought this because of an idea I had relating to the CPU, which I've moved on from now. I was going to use this as a kind of um, fake ROM chip. So I'd wire all of the I.O. pins into the pins of the ROM chip and uh, emulate memory addresses so I could um, effectively upload code to the RAM on the Arduino and have this as like a temporary way of getting code quickly from the PC into the CPU build for testing. But I've got a different idea for that now, so you'll see that at some point. This is a couple of days later than when I needed it, if it is what I think it is. Right, so this should be six cores. So I think this was actually sold as burger alarm wire, but the UART and the display on my CPU build are connected back to the back plane with six wires. It's power ground and four data, which are two load and two assert lines. And so I thought wires like this would actually be a lot neater than the uh, ribbon cable. I'd be able to route them a little bit better. Yeah, I'll probably still make up some DuPont wires with this and see if I can tidy that build up. So this was £6.79 for 10 metres, probably much more than I need. I did like the fact that it had the distinct red and black wires in it, which I like to have for the power distribution. One times plastic sheet. I don't think that's what it is. Okay, what did I order lots of? Those are 74 LS00s. Zero zeros. Oh, that's good. I think they all are. Okay, I don't remember ordering 20 of those, but I don't regret it. It's like um, NAND gates are one of the gates known as universal logic gates, in that you can actually make any of the other logic gates from the right combination of NAND gates, nor gates are the same. I might do a video one day just showing all of the interesting circuits you can make with just the four NAND gates on one of these chips. Okay, I found the order. That was £2.88 for 20 of these four times NAND chips. That's a great price. I think what I did was I went to buy a couple for the UART build and saw the price on these and, uh, and and bought a couple that would come quickly and the pack of 20 which I knew would take its time coming from Shenzhen, China. So these are 
74LS164 shift registers. I remember ordering this now. On the UART, I have a single 74LS164, and that came in a selection pack of TTL chips that I had. If I wanted to do something more complex than what I've got in the current UART, I specifically add in uh, parity bits. I would have needed to um, add an additional shift register or constructed one extra bit in the shift chain using AVA chips, but this would have been the easy way of doing it. So I ordered these in a hurry, but didn't end up using them yet. So this was an eBay purchase. Now they're down as $2.99 a pair and 40p postage but I think I paid just under six pounds for four of these. Okay, so this is video recorder. All right, so this is a HDMI video capture. So that's USB output and HDMI in. And the actual reason why I got this was to capture the output from a Raspberry Pi. There's a couple of places where being able to build with a Raspberry Pi would have been handy but I had no way of uh, taking the output and putting it onto uh, a video. When I ordered this, I was actually thinking that instead of putting the terminal emulator on the PC for showing the output from my UART, I could get a little Raspberry Pi set up inside the field of view, but then I could capture the output with this. In hindsight, the running the terminal emulator and the FTDI cable was just as effective, but there are a few other things I can uh, use this for in the future. Okay, so this was an Amazon purchase and I paid $7.45 for it. It looks like the price has come down even further. I thought that was an insanely cheap price. First video capture device I bought cost me a lot of money. Now I stop and think about it. HDMI is a digital format. So what this is going to be internally is basically a FIFO with the USB interface on one end and the HDMI on the other. I imagine it's probably not actually doing any processing of the, the video feed. Be interesting to find out. This is a solderless breadboard and this one's translucent, which is kind of interesting. But that's what I think all of these are going to be as well. I've also got one of these Elegoo ones that I've been using on the UART series. Okay, I've also got a bunch more of these breadboards on order and hopefully most of those will turn up in the next few days. But basically I've used a couple of different types of breadboards and they're actually quite varied in terms of the performance. And what I wanted to do was buy a bunch of them and actually try and give a few tests to them, see how good they are, because the quality of the breadboards can make quite a big difference to your experience developing. After the vendor who sold me the original breadboards I had, which I kind of lucked out on, if I had bought some really rubbish breadboards right at the start, the CPU build may never have got off the ground. And so what I want to do is, is give a bunch of the different breadboards available on eBay and Amazon a bit of a test and work out what the right ones to get are so I can uh, buy some more for the next stage of development. If you've got any ideas for tests that you want to see me try and run on, on the, the various breadboards, then uh, drop it down in the comments. If you're watching this video after I've done that uh, breadboard test and review, then there'll probably be a link up there somewhere. Okay, well I hope you found this interesting and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.